Good morning, everyone. My name is Elisa Caradio. I am a product manager uh, in the uh, Enterprise uh, Infrastructure and Solutions Group uh, here at Cisco. Uh, here is Kural uh, Angraswamy. He is a technical marketing engineer working in the same team as me. Today, we are going to cover um, threat defense uh, techniques to secure an enterprise branch. So, first of all, let's start with what a branch is. An enterprise branch is really an extension of a corporate network, and it's traditionally connected to your headquarters through a WAN transport. Traditionally, all the branch uh, traffic is backhauled to the headquarters um, and secured through a VPN tunnel. However, um, the branch is undergoing a transformation today. There's a lot of new trends that are affecting um, the way the branch looks like. Um, first of all, many enterprises uh, are adopting BYOD devices, uh, which increases the number of devices uh, that are um, available at the branch. More users are actually served uh, by branch at the branch uh, offices today, um, whether it is employees, whether it is partners or customers. And companies are also um, trying to improve uh, productivity of their employees uh, by uh, leveraging applications that are hosted in the cloud. All these trends are putting a tremendous pressure on the branch in terms of bandwidth requirement. At the same time, the employees sitting at the branch are accustomed to expect land-like experience when they are using applications, irrespective of whether these applications are hosted locally or in the cloud. So, enterprises are challenged. On one side, their goal is to uh, cost, uh, 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 save costs by reducing the bandwidth um, consumption and pay less for lease, line, lease lines. At the same time, they need to provide uh, that user experience that uh, their employees are expecting. So, um, many customers are looking at ways to modernize their WAN transport. And one of them is to leverage the local internet path for some of all of the traffic generated at the branch. We call this direct internet access. And with direct internet access, the moment you open up your branch to the internet, you immediately increase the vulnerable attack surface at your branch. So security needs to be top of mind in any branch network design. So today, I'm going over some of the deployment scenario where enterprises can safely leverage direct internet access by securing their branch through a series of technologies available on the ISR branch routers. They don't need to deploy additional appliances at their branch. They can use the services that are available on the routers uh, to create that security uh, suite that will help them both reduce and control the uh, threat surface as well as protect the branch against attacks. So let's look at one of the typical um, enterprise branches, uh, which is the retail branch. So what would we have at the retail branch? We will have some employee traffic. We will have point of sales. And we will have uh, possibly and most likely guest traffic. 
many of the um, many of the um, retail branches or retail stores offer guest Wi-Fi for their own customers, and that needs to be uh, taken in account when we talk about security at the branch. So, this is what a retail branch looks like, and the goal of a retail um, store would be, first of all, to meet PCI compliance. And secondly, control guest access. <coughs> so what are the techniques available on the ISRs that help them accomplish these two goals and safely use the direct internet access for some of their traffic? First of all, the recommendation would be to route the guest traffic directly through the local internet path. That's one way for retail stores and retail branches to use the direct internet access. But um, while doing that, they need to make sure that anything that comes in through that internet interface does not affect anything else that uh, happens at the branch. Segmentation is the first and foremost priority when it comes to network design. By segmenting out the interfaces that you have created at your branch, you are actually reducing and controlling the threat surface. What does it mean? That if an attack happens at the segment of your network, it won't spread across the rest of your network. And by doing that, you can use uh, and for doing that, you can use zone-based firewall, which is a um, firewall um, uh, capability available on the ISR branch router to create zones and by default block any traffic from flowing from one zone to the other. Zone-based firewall helps you meet PCI compliance for perimeter control and uh, protocol inspection as well, because you can con create policies that uh, control what traffic flows between the zones. So by doing, um, by enabling zone-based firewall, you are meeting your uh, segmentation uh, requirement from a security standpoint to reduce the attack surface, as well as help meet part of the PCI compliance mandate. But it doesn't stop here. PCI compliance requirement 11 demands that the cardholder data environment uh, must go through um, sustainable inspection against uh, vulnerabilities. And by doing that, uh, an IPS system becomes a critical part of the branch deployment. IPS stands for Intrusion Protect, uh, Prevention System, and we do have, we actually launched here at Cisco Live uh, yesterday, a Snort IPS running on your branch router. Snort IPS is based on uh, open source Snort, uh, it's an industry-recognized um, intrusion prevention system uh, with more than 4 million downloads. It's one of the most widely deployed IPS systems in the world. And now it's available as an application running in the service containers of our branch routers. Snort IPS can work in IPS mode as well as in IDS mode. So in IDS mode, whenever a threat is detected, um, an alert is generated, but the traffic is let through. In IPS mode, also the traffic gets blocked. Now, Snort IPS um, needs to be maintained up to date through signatures. And the signatures um, are developed by Cisco Talos group of security experts. And 
in order to um, make uh, this deployment very, very easy, the router can be configured to um, automatically retrieve the signatures uh, from either a Cisco store, which is basically cisco.com, or from a uh, servers that can be deployed at the headquarters. You can define the schedule at which you want to retrieve these signatures. Signature packages are updated uh, as frequently as daily in order to protect against any new threats that is being discovered. Um, Snort IPS is a signature-based IPS. That means that the traffic that flows through um, the IPS uh, gets matched against the signature database. And if a signature is detected, an alert is generated in the form of a syslog. The syslog can be collected <coughs> centrally at the headquarter in a syslog server that is dedicated uh, for security. And uh, security monitoring tools can be used uh, for further analysis. Um, I, Snort IPS could be deployed uh, on a specific interface of the router or globally. We do recommend to deploy it globally because uh, by doing that, you not only inspect the traffic that goes in and out of your branch, you also inspect the traffic that stay within your branch. And B with BYOD, all those mobile devices that we are so hooked on um, have set in coffee shops, have set in libraries, have set in places that may not be as secure as we think. So by inspecting uh, all the traffic that stay within the branch, you can uh, detect and catch potential, um, uh, potential attacks, even if they are not wanted attacked, attacks. Um, we are not done yet. We have the guests to deal with. Guests are even worse than the, <laughs> the BYOD devices from a security standpoint. You don't know who they are. So in order to uh, deal with guests, segmentation is very important, as we said before, because it protects the rest of the branch from them. At the same time, you want to make sure that the guests that are sitting in your network are browsing only appropriate sites. After all, it's your liability as an enterprise branch owner. And also, you would want to make sure that anything that they browse doesn't bring in any malware to your network. We have CWS, Cloud Web Security, as a solution integrated on the uh, branch router uh, that um, helps you create granular policies to control what sites users, or guests in this case, can access. Um, and you can filter that by URL, but also by categories of URL, by reputation. Uh, CWS maintains reputation scores across, uh, dynamic reputation score, uh, scores across. Is that a DNS-based solution? This is not DNS-based. You actually need to send um, the traffic out, the web traffic out to the um, CWS tower, which resides in the cloud. And by doing that, you enable a CWS connector, which establishes a secure IPsec tunnel between your branch router and the cloud. Thank you. Um, CWS inspects HTTP and HTTPS traffic and enforces the policies that you have created. The policies, as I said, are about filtering traffic ac um, guest access um, to certain sites, to certain category of sites. You can block gaming sites, for example, versus auction sites. Um, you can uh, uh, also block uh, sites by their reputation, which is maintained by uh, the telemetry, uh, which is um, the reputation score, is calculated based on the tele telemetry data that the tower uh, sees and collects. Uh, you can also uh, use the anti malware protection capability of the CWS tower to detect any malware uh, that uh, could be carried um, in those requests. So by simply doing a combination of services, or enabling a combination of services that 
already are available on the router, you are able to meet PCI compliance, you are able to control guest access and reduce the threat surface all at once without the need to deploy an additional appliance. Uh, in a retail space, this is very important, square footage actually generates <coughs> revenue. So it's much better spent in displaying the merchandise versus mounting another rack to host additional appliances. So, uh, yes? One additional question here. Uh, is this centralized managed, for example, I have 1,000 brands? Good question. Um, so the features that I talked about um, can be centrally configured and provisioned through Cisco Prime, uh, which pushes templates of configuration to all the branch routers that constitute your enterprise. CWS has its own portal. Uh, CWS is a more, um, uh, it's a, uh, the audience of the CWS portal is more security oriented, so it provides a very nice separation of roles and responsibilities between NetOps and SecOps teams uh, in terms of IT. So um, yes, the answer is yes, it can be centrally managed through different type of solutions. So all, all of these are separate. Does it inspect any other kind of traffic? Or just so CWS only looks at web traffic. So all of these are, are managed with separate systems, right? So using um, CWS in the cloud, Snort IPS would be through like Firesight? No, and then CWS. So, sorry, I, I wanted to, to uh, clarify. Snort is not going to be through Fireside. Okay. Snort is going to be through Cisco Prime for, um, for the centralized uh, configuration and provisioning. And from the alerts perspective, uh, it generates syslogs that can be managed by any security monitoring tools. Uh, Splunk is an example of that. So the reason we did that is um Snort as a security feature, sometimes it may be managed by a security ops separate or in some cases like uh, smaller branches, it may, the SecOps and the NetOps may be the same person who's managing it, right? So we made it such that you can send it as a separate syslog to a security collection system like security event man manager, right? Or you can send it to your NetOps uh, syslog manager, you can look at it in either way. So we made it so flexible, that way you can you know, select which one you want to use and whichever the um, monitoring tool that you have for security. How, how do you pay for CWS? So CWS is priced in two ways, per user and per, per bandwidth. Per and there are concurrent user or per max user? I mean, how, when you say per user, how do you mean? I mean um, how do we have so you actually need to count the seats. Um, number of actually physical users that access the CWS um, uh, tower. Well, I, I thought it was for guest access. Yes, so, so for, for guest guys. access, in this case, we do actually recommend the per bandwidth uh, license okay. because it's uh, very difficult to predetermine how many users you will have gotcha. in your guest, west, guest network. Okay. How dependent are the um, the snort on the zone-based firewall. Do you have to run the zone-based firewall to be able to do the other they IPS are, and IDS? No, they are all independent components, so you can turn on and off whichever you need most in your network. Obviously, the recommendation is security is not a one-size-fits-all, so the more layers you have to protect your branch, the better. That's why we do recommend perimeter control and segmentation, intrusion, intrusion prevention, and um, URL filtering and malware protection all layered one on top of, each of the other. All right, let me move on to a different type of branch. Same picture, <coughs> we're talking about direct internet access here. So we wanna show here how the direct internet access could be leveraged for not only guest traffic, But for example, traffic that goes to the public cloud for applications like Office 365, Salesforce.com, and 
what some of the enterprises today has, have started to do, to do is leverage those applications for some of their corporate traffic. So you will have users sitting here at the branch, all working, um, assuming that they are in an extension of their corporate network, but for uh, reasons like the one I explained before, um, improving product, uh, uh, productivity on a daily basis, uh, on daily basis activities, uh, and save bandwidth, and provide the best user experience. Some of these uh, corporate traffic gets routed out to the internet through the local internet path. So now you have a bigger problem than before. Before you were routing users, you had you segmented your traffic. You you really separated um, the guest traffic that was flowing out the internet directly from your corporate traffic. Here, it's your corporate traffic that all of a sudden is exposed to anything that could come in from the internet. So you need to beef up your security at the branch, almost like really you were at a headquarter or a data center. So you need to have a, a comprehensive set of advanced threat defense to be able to deal with any potential threat that comes into the internet and could harm your corporate network. So that's, that's where we do recommend the firepower threat defense solution which runs on a UCSC blade, which is a compute blade that you can add to your router. You can run virtualization on top of it, and then you can run a Firepower virtual instance on top. So it's really like you had an appliance sitting at your branch, but you don't. You still save that square footage. You're not adding a new device in your network, but yet you have all the capabilities that Firepower provides, that provide coverage against all the in all the phases of a attack continuum. What are the phases of an attack continuum? The before, before the attack, what you need to do is know. You need to baseline your network. You need to understand what it looks like when everything is quiet, so that you know when something is happening. For that, Firepower provide, provides a, a AVC, um, application visibility and control, uh, coupled with a next generation firewall. AVC provides visibility over um, 3,000 applications, so you know exactly what applications are being used in your network, uh, who uses them, and control through NG firewall policies, what each application can do. During, what you do during an attack? Should something come in, how do you react? So, Firepower Threat Defense provides NG IPS capabilities. NG IPS has been tested uh, by the independent NSS labs and has gotten uh, top-notch reviews. It detected 99.5% of the threats that were thrown at it. It's based on signatures as well as behavioral um, and contextual awareness. So you can actually fine-tune your sensors based on what constitutes a false positive in your network and just worry about real threats where they come in. In addition to um, NGIPS, um, we do have um, the remediation capabilities to deal with the aftermath of an attack. So you have AMP, Advanced Malware Protection, also 
embedded in, um, in the firepower uh, security stack. You don't have to go to the cloud here to apply uh, this technology. You have it on-prem on your router. You have um, some retrospection capabilities as well. Um, to understand what went wrong and go back and potentially change your policies so that you are better served um, in case of a future attack. On top of all of this, uh, you can still do URL filtering um, uh, should you have a guest network also uh, in your, uh, at your branch or simply because from a corporate policies perspective, you want to block certain sites from, um, for, for employees access. So uh, you have the ability to do URL filtering based on a database of uh, URL categories and reputation that also resides on-prem. So with a single solution, you're able to meet all your goals in terms of securing the branch uh, for direct internet access. So um, as I said, there's no one size fit, fit all in, se in security, but the ISR routers come equipped with this, a um, set of tools that allow you to pick and choose the technologies that uh, fit best your branch requirements. Uh, I forgot to mention about Firepower that you can use the Firesight uh, management console uh, to uh, manage, um, uh, manage, control the policies and extract the reporting uh, in case of uh, this particular deployment. That's all I have. So for me, kind of, you included everything in the ISR platform. So yeah, you have now everything that was before only possible on an ASA. So you really improved it to a full-blown security line. Yeah. Yeah. So we added security uh, with the mind share that um, the the physical square footage is important. It's either revenue generating or can host more employees. So why would you want to add more devices? It also adds to the cost of TCO. Now you have multiple devices to manage with different tools and uh, different competences. So in one single box, you have all the services that, uh, that you need. So in, in addition, you're also able to take advantage of the advanced routing functions level, right? The segmentation is more critical. So you're able to use the routing functions and other services offered by ISR in addition to security as a service. Is there a spec sheet where I can see what kind of throughput is available if I use these services? Yeah, so uh, there's definitely network management tools that uh, are available on the, for, for the routing um, features. Uh, Cisco Prime provides uh, a series of advanced reporting uh, that cover all the routing um, capabilities uh, it, of our branch. Sorry, routers. is it a question about management or about performance? Uh, scale? Yeah, I would like if I am able next generation firewalling, what kind of throughput do I have available for? Yes, we have published that numbers and we can get that information to you. I think especially when you get down to the like the square footage argument for for I can understand it for retail, but you know you're not going to have a huge amount of um, devices on site anyway. But the performance trade—I mean, I like the idea of the integrated routing, but the the I guess the performance trade-off. Yes. Of having a, a built-in module would be interesting to see. Right. If there so is any. keep in mind that here you're adding a dedicated compute through the UCSE uh, blade. So I it's, understand it's your the question. the bandwidth between, internal bandwidth between the compute and the router. Right. That would be the traditional concern. Correct. Um, so I guess it'd be good to see that in the stats. Yeah, we do have published results cool. uh, that you're happy, uh, we are happy to share. Um, by the way, uh, there's more information that you can get at the go to router security. The uh, 
at this page. And uh, of course, you can always contact any of us for more information. One last question. Um, the Snort IPS, it's on the 4000 series ISRs. Yes. What is required? Do I have to install a hardware module? Is it completely software? To install? Pardon me, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, to, to install. Um, Snort IPS? Yes. So uh, it actually runs uh, natively on the router. So you don't, ne you don't need to add any additional module. You need to equip your ISR with enough memory uh, in order to do the compute um, uh, or the inspection, rather, and we require a minimum of eight gigabyte of uh, DRAM. Okay. 